Hi, I'm Katrina. And I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. Today, <laughs> and I do have it, we're going to talk about Matthew 23, and we're going to focus on verses 13 through 36. But you can also find this in Luke 11, 37 through 54. Yes. So it's always <laughs> really great, too, to look at the different areas where um, scripture and is uh, repeated or the different accounts like from different disciples be because they bring different parts to it and different understanding to it. So I heard actually something ab about this recently that is really helpful. So some people will say, well, scripture co contradicts itself because one account might be just slightly different than another account, but there's nothing in these stories of the major happenings that contradict themselves. And if you and I were to encounter the exact same experience and then not talk about it beforehand mm -hmm. or share our encounter with each other beforehand and just separately, if we were taken separately and give our accounts, it would be slightly different the way that you would explain the mm -hmm. happenings and the way that I would. And that's part of how we know that um, scripture validates itself is through the way that the disciples tell the stories. It, mm -hmm. it validates the trueness of mm -hmm. the story which is so good it it's kind of like what we're doing with crumbs because what happens is is that we both spend time studying these stories and then the lord marks us differently and then we bring it forth yeah and he gives he points out different words and he brings different things to light so yeah it's kind it's of good. the same idea yeah. so um this is a, a real fun topic not really mm. <laughs> it's the eight woes of um, the hypocrites so mm -hmm. jesus is speaking and um pretty much all of 23 is about jesus just bringing down the hammer mm -hmm. and pointing out the sin and um it's this hidden sin that people don't want to talk about and that's no different than today it's like the hidden sin of, uh, you know, now you can point out someone else's sin, you can point out their wrongdoings, you can point out all the things that they say and do that don't line up with who you think they are or should be, but you're not taking a really good look at yourself. And so that's really um, what he's yeah. getting to is that this whole scribes and Pharisee and the hypocrites that they are, they paint this incredible picture mm -hmm. outwardly but yet they are not um, inwardly lining up and Jesus is letting them know he fully knows. Yeah, and he starts out with a profound statement in verse 13, actually. I'd like to read it. Um, in the New Living Testament, it would speak out, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves and you don't let others enter either. And this is pretty profound because we also see in scripture where um, scripture actually teaches that we uh, are will be known by the fruit of our life, right? So if someone's professing Christianity, but doing things that are hurtful and harmful and the fruit of their life doesn't match up with the word of God, that's a good indication that they probably don't have the spirit of the Lord living inside of them. Not that we all are perfect, you know, we're a work in progress. We're a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, but the evidence of the spirit inside of us is the fruit, the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what Jesus is saying is these are men who are smart up here in their own minds and they know religious law, um, but they have not encountered heaven themselves. And so in that truth, they are actually teaching from a position of keeping other people from entering heaven as well. Right. And that's frightening because we've talked about um, the door and and the Lord really has this whole theme about being the door of heaven. And um, and so when he says it's a shut door, that they're shutting the door, that's a lot of responsibility, that they have shut the door. That's saying the blood is on their hands, which right. is super intense yeah. yep. for sure. Yeah. So it it's this, he just keeps going after Jesus just keeps speaking right directly to them mm -hmm. right off the bat he goes right into this whole thing about um, how they they take from the widows mm -hmm. and and that is super sad like they they make it look like they're being helpful and they make it look like they are there to provide but yet they take from the widows and and the children who are in need mm -hmm. um, but and, and vulnerable that they're vulnerable to whatever um, the scribes and the Pharisees are doing because they trust that's the way they should go and and that's just super sad and I do I do think that still happens I think we still hear stories where 
Um, there are religious groups. You've heard stories about uh, people who have been taken advantage of. Yeah. And but in all of that, that becomes an excuse for people not to go to church. I know. And instead, church really is about um, unhealthy people finding health in Christ Jesus. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just had this conversation earlier today um, ab about that specifically, about how um, this person felt like the church was too judgmental. And um, the big thing with, with that is is that scripture teaches us that uh, we are to judge those that are within the body of Christ, mm -hmm. those that are professing Christianity. Um, but then those outside of the body those are the ones that we are to love and to not sit in a position of judgment, but sit in a position of truth with love, which we talk about frequently. Mm -hmm. um, so the church is open arms, but it doesn't change the fact that we're still called to stand in truth with love. Um, and yeah, I, I think many people are hurt by the church and then they, they take that and they place that hurt on Christ. Kind of like if we're hurt by our earthly father, we might take that earthly hurt and then we put, we, we put that characteristic on our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we do it unknowingly. And so, yeah, that's a good thing to call out. I also, um, you know, when, when Jesus is talking about how they're doing the right thing, like they're tithing mm -hmm. and they're doing the things that they're supposed to do, but they're neglecting what's truly important, justice and mercy, um, these these characteristics that the Lord wants us to operate out of his power so in Christ Jesus we're able to be merciful we're able to be patient and kind and loving and merciful um, but oftentimes what we see in Christianity is we see people that are tight they're going to church every Sunday and they're tithing every single week and they're they're checking the boxes but then again going back to the fruit of their life they're not they're not accountable mm -hmm. to the behavior in their day to day. I think that one of the big things that um, that when it's the truth of it is is that they just don't know scripture. Yeah. Like I I think the way that I lived my life I when I first became a believer I was so young and I had scripture spoken into me and I had scripture told to me and I listened to Christian music and I did all these really great things. Um, and I did do them to make me feel good and to have other people see. I mean, that's just yeah. the truth of it. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I didn't know scripture. And so um, there was a lot of pride in my Christianity and in what I was doing. I mean, I had, I was having this whole, like, look at me. I'm good, good. Yeah. Shoot. It was, now I look at it, I'm like, icky. I know, I know. <laughs> But the thing is, is I didn't know scripture. And then all of a sudden you start looking at scripture and scripture is all about you taking a good hard look at yourself. Scripture is all about you allowing Christ into your heart to refine you. It's not about you refining another or you pointing out the sin of another. It's about the father coming in and searching your heart and pointing out the things within you that are not in alignment with him. And and I think that's why people don't stay in scripture because it really is convicting, convicting, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're in scripture, you're going to be convicted and you're, you're going to be corrected all the time. But, but scripture says my children are destroyed for a lack of knowledge and the lack of knowledge is lack of understanding of the scriptures. Yeah. And we're destroyed because of it. You know, I, I hear people joke about like, oh, well, ignorance is bliss. Like you can't be held accountable for what you don't know. Well, you know what? The enemy knows all. Satan knows all. Mm -hmm. Satan knows the Bible better than we do. Yeah. And um, he's constantly looking for an open door to come in and to manipulate and to steal the ministry that the Lord has for your life. And we are claiming ignorance when we really need to be clinging to the word of God as our very breath. Yeah. So I want to point out, so like Jesus doesn't even like, he is super clear in here when he's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. Now these are the men of honor and position. Like yeah. we talked that they were seated, they seated themselves in the seat of Moses, which meant mm -hmm. that they were in the highest seat. Like they had the best seat in the house. They, they everyone looked up to them. Everyone seek their attention. But Jesus called these people, he called them uh, broad of vipers, snakes, blind guides, 
and wash whitewash tombs you know those are um really for people of honor like he's calling them the exact opposite yeah he's calling them and and like let's look at what a hypocrite really is so i mean a hypocrite is is um someone doing wrong looking at someone doing wrong and pointing it out but yet they're doing the same thing wrong or something worse just but they have it hidden yeah um you know it's it's one who under judges themselves yeah you know they are they will they will point a finger at, or they will bad mouth or belittle or mock or um minimize um anyone in their path and obviously i think christians are a target like i think that um the enemy wants us to be belittled and mocked and mm -hmm. um have people point the finger because the the more he tries to um squash us he wants us not to have a voice mm -hmm. and to speak truth because he knows the power of the truth will set you free and then you know it's it's really too like it's the fact that you're you're so watchful of others yet not watching and taking a good look at yourself yeah the you know, log in your own eye yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's really a sad thing because I think the um, you're missing it you just miss it by judging what you're doing is comparison yeah well I love how measuring I love how Jesus put it he says that they're straining their water for a gnat when they're swallowing a camel which oh, yes. is so powerful because what he's saying is like the things that you're concerned about are so minute like you're so out of order which when I first came to Christ that was the first thing the Lord showed me was how out of order how tipsy topsy my life was in the way that I worshiped I mean I will just tell you I worshiped my career and then my kids and then my husband and then God was like the side thought and it, it it was out of order and Jesus is telling them like you're worried about a gnat in your water when you're swallowing a camel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alignment right mm -hmm. alignment with the father you know that is a huge huge thing but the father is super gentle and super kind like he doesn't like force all this change at once I think we be people become Christians and and they become like they're so shamed and so guilt-ridden mm -hmm. that they feel like they have to do so much or they stay away they try to earn love because we live in a oh, right. society of codependency yeah. or mm -hmm. they stay away from it because they feel like they can't measure up which none of that is mm -hmm. true like that is just a lie of the enemy to keep you from the freedom and the knowledge of Christ yeah which is really what the father wants us to do is live in the freedom of him and and be fruitful for him which if you look at verse 25 that's exactly what belinda is saying is they're so focused on cleaning up the outside that the inside is filthy and the outside looks clean he, he says what whitewashed tombs mm -hmm. jesus is literally calling them dead people on the inside on the inside men of dead bones is what he says and so from the outside they have these beautiful whitewashed tombs that look so pristine and well kept mm -hmm. not dirty but really on the inside they are just dead bones not alive yeah and that is super sad yeah because really to be alive in Christ and to walk in the freedom of Christ is to move in a way that the more I learn the more uh, I move in the Lord and the more he fills me with the spirit and the more I'm willing to surrender mm -hmm. it means that he it, the more I repent mm -hmm. I, I mean I'm corrections right away um, but the, it's so free mm -hmm. yeah peace there is so much peace mm -hmm. so where else did the father show you um, yeah, whitewash tombs I just sorry I just want to read that when I was looking up I don't remember um, I, I don't remember what spot I was but I was doing a little bit of a word search where I was studying and um, the whole thing is having faith to step beyond pointing out someone's mm. lack of faith or someone's great faith it's just walking in the faith in which God has given you and as he refines your faith yeah. but it was interesting because um, I wrote this quote and it was from one of the commentaries I read and it said faith means fidelity yeah. to promise yeah being faithful to the promise of God just being faithful to God like 
there's this is the thing that the father really spoke to me personally is that um, one needs to be first faithful to him before he they can be faithful to another and I think um, that's a personal journey for each person is that when you find your faithfulness in the Father it's so much easier to be faithful to another amen that is awesome um, you know I also the thing that really struck me was the prophecy at the end of yes. this yes. all the prophecies so Jesus um, basically he says to them, like, you say that you wouldn't be like your ancestors killing the prophets. Mm -hmm. um, and he's prophesying that they are the same. And it's prophecy fulfilled when Christ is murdered. Mm -hmm. This is all right before the, that. Right. This is all before Christ goes to the cross. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, like, you're, you're saying that you're not like your ancestors and that you wouldn't kill the prophets, yet they kill our Messiah. Mm -hmm. And and then from there, it goes into more prophecy. And this is what really struck me is in verse um, 37, which um, I'll read that in, the, in the, um, the New Living Testament. It says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And the Lord brought me to two different things. So Psalm 91 talks about being under the refuge of his feathers and his feathers protecting us, mm -hmm. um, which is really beautiful. But then also just the fact that um, Christ talks about a chicken because when he prophesies to um, Peter, he tells him that the cock will crow three times mm -hmm. um, and he will deny him three times. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that he's using a chicken reference again, just the fact that he can use And maybe it struck me because I'm a chicken farmer, <laughs> but I think it's powerful. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. So you're not going to be able to be perfect. You're not going to do it all right. And I think that's where grace and mercy comes in and forgiveness. And you have to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to start forgiving yourself first and allowing God to refine you, cleanse you from the inside out because that's the beauty he wants. He wants to radiate from within you. And when, when he starts to radiate from within you, there is a beauty that comes that's so unmatched. It's so true. And I, again, just had this conversation about how the things that I was convicted about five years ago versus now are so different. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that God loved me any less. That doesn't mean that his Holy Spirit wasn't living with, within me. What it means is that we're on a constant journey of repentance, of renewal, of regeneration in the Father. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're constantly learning. And as we continue to seek him and to learn more about him, he just continues to um, change us and grow us because the, the goal is to make us more like Christ, but that doesn't happen overnight. So don't allow like the little things that if someone's nitpicking you about little things, don't allow that to discourage you from seeking the father, seek him with your whole heart and allow mm -hmm. him to work from the inside out. Oftentimes mm -hmm. we start trying to, in our own power, change things and make ourselves different on the outside. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to stick. It's got to be through his power. If it was by our own power, Christ never would have had need to have gone to the cross for us. Mm -hmm. And don't spend your time picking and poking at the flaws of another or measuring their faith because really the only one that will matter on the day of judgment is yours yeah. is the measure of your faith and that's with Christ Jesus so that's the only thing that will matter but don't stop sharing the truth amen don't stop sharing the truth don't allow that we're, we're living in a time where good is evil and evil is called good and um, we cannot stop standing for the truth but it has to be with the love of Christ not in a righteous way but just in a way of just knowing the father's love for that person and wanting to see them set free from the bondage yeah so yeah yeah I hope, no okay I hope that um something of this conversation um resonates and lands on fruitful soil within your heart I pray that um you will start looking at others through the eyes of Christ and not through your fleshful eyes and that you will see um, something different. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you will see the love of the Father and all that he's doing in you. 
And just remember one thing in verse 37 that I wrote at the top of my Bible is that many are called, but few are chosen. So Christ died for all, um, but there are few that will rise to the occasion of loving him with their full heart. So mm -hmm. I just pray that that is you and that is you today. So yes. thanks for joining us. Yeah, we can't wait to meet you at his table. God bless you.